I'm going to go through topic seven very quickly. This is a review. These are all examples from the book except the very last ones. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through step by step and basically reteach and review with you all the different concepts throughout topic seven. So first of all, in example two, in seven one, it says, here's the rectangle. It's a dilation and the center's at P. So a dilation, look for the things without the prime. These ones have the prime, that little tick mark or apostrophe. So this is the pre-image down here. This is the image after the fact. And so it basically says, how is this affected? Well, if you notice, all the angles did not change. All the angles are congruent, but all the side lengths got bigger and they got bigger proportionally. To get from this rectangle down here to get to this rectangle over there, you had to multiply every single side length by the same scale factor. Okay, for this one, it says the quadrilateral and it says JKLM prime is a dilation. So it is a dilation. Notice those tick marks. So this red one out here, this outside one, is the image, where the inside one is the pre-image. So you have to figure out what the scale factor is. To find a scale factor, you can do the new shape over the old shape. That will give you the scale factor. Or sometimes you don't know which is new and old. And if you didn't, you could say the big over the small. So if you're ever not sure, do big over small, but we know there's a new shape and an old shape. So you divide the numbers, make sure to simplify because 18 over 12 needs to be simplified. What are the vertices? Now look at this notation. That means it's a dilation with a scale factor of three. And it's really important. You have to know that the dilation is from the origin for this to work. Otherwise you'd have to do some different math. But if it's from the, the origin, basically you just take each of these ordered pairs and multiply by the scale factor of three. So I'll do this one example for you. This is negative one, two. Negative one, two. Because I went over one and then up two. Well, if I took each of those coordinates or parts of the coordinate times three, that means I'm gonna take the negative one times three and the two times three, and I would get negative three, six. So you would have to do that for each of the points. 7-2 was kind of a shorter lesson. It says, describe a possible similarity transformation. So look at the pre-image and the image. Remember the ones without the prime or tick marks, that's the original. And basically you just have to discover or determine what is involved. So a dilation definitely changes the size, but there are also those three rigid transformations we talked about before. And those are a rotation, could be that, it could be a reflection, or it could be a translation where it's like a slide. You have to figure out which part of these. Is it a dilation, a rotation, reflection, translation, or a combination of all of those? Lesson seven three, if these two angles are con congruent and those two angles are congruent, are these triangles similar? If you were ever trying to show or prove triangles are similar, you only have three choices. Your choices are side, 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 similarity, side, angle, side, similarity, or angle, angle, similarity. So one of these has to be true. If you can't show that one of these is true, the triangles are not similar. So with the AA, you would have to show that two sets of angles are, are congruent, which in this case they are. If it was side, angle, side, you would have to show that the two side lengths are proportional on both sets of triangles and the angle in between is congruent to the other angle in between the two sides. And then if it for side, 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 you would have to show that all three sides of one triangle are proportional to all three sides of another triangle. Basically, they would have to have the same scale factor. I love these application problems. You're gonna have to know how to do the application problems as well as just the regular plug and chug math problems. But basically you are gonna look for similar triangles. So if you have a sun or a shadow, they are gonna create similar triangles because right here you have two angles that are the same. And then right here you have two right angles. So by angle, angle, these triangles are similar. So if I knew the new shape and the old or original, I could set that equal to the new over the original because the scale factors have to be the same. If I'm not sure, then I'm just gonna say big over small, equals big over small and set what you're looking for equal to X. So I believe 
um, you're looking for the height of this tower right here. And then you would set this up big, like the height of the big triangle over the height of the small triangle should be equal. The base of the big triangle over the base of the small triangle. And I literally labeled the triangles big, small, or if I knew which one was first and last, I would say new, old. Set up those proportions and then cross multiply to solve. Seven four was probably the toughest section for most students. So when you have these triangles, these right triangles, make sure, and this is what I'd recommend to everyone. I recommend you draw the small, the medium, and large triangle completely separate and label each side. So if I have this small triangle right here, SRQ, I would label SRQ and put the side lengths. It looks like the hypotenuse is 15, the base is nine. And then I would go to this medium one and I'm just gonna fill it in in a different way. And I would label that. So the medium right side is the S, I have a Q and I have a P way up here. The hypotenuse is 20. It doesn't look like I have anything else. And then I'd go to the biggest triangle. Right angle is Q, shortest side is R. At the top, even though it's cut out here, it's P. Label everything you know. And it looks like I have this nine down here, but it's not the full side length or the whole length of that. So I'm gonna label this is 15, this is 20, and it says, what is QS? QS, everywhere there's a QS, I would put an X. And you need to set up a proportion, new over old, new over old, or big over small. You might not use all three triangles. So for sure you need to use the triangles that have the variable, at least one of them, and then you can use other triangles to help you find it. So set those up, cross multiply, and you can get it. Okay, here's another problem still in 7-4. Still same idea, you have a small triangle, a medium triangle, and then the big triangle. When you do this, draw all three triangles, set them all the same direction, label them, put the side lengths, and then just be careful at the very end, you might have a radical, like a square root number. You're going to need to simplify the radical. So I'm just gonna give it an example. It doesn't have anything to do with this actual picture, but let's say I had the square root of 20 just to keep the numbers kind of smaller. I would say 20 is 10 times two. Two's a prime, I would circle it. 10 isn't, but I'd break it up into two and five. If I have two of the same number, I can rewrite that as two squared and five. Well, a square and a square root, these cancel each other. So this two would come out and you would have square root of five. This is just an example of how you would simplify a radical. It is not part of this actual question. I just gave you an example so you'd remember. So still break up these triangles into three separate. And then if you do get a radical or a square root, simplify the radical at the end. Seven five had two totally different um, concepts that it was teaching, so be really careful. It used the side splitter theorem, first of all. And so if you have triangles and you have parallel sides, which these are, or parallel bases, for example, you can set up this problem like a fraction. So I usually put the fraction bar right here at this line. Notice I have four over, and then I put this stuff in there. Notice that line, that's where the fraction bar is, equals three over X. This line, that's that fraction bar over here. And it's the sides that are split, hence the side splitter theorem. So you would take this, you would cross multiply, and then that way you would solve for X. That, once you have X, then you can help solve for Y and Z. Here's the other type of problem in 7-5. If you have a triangle that has an angle bisected and it's creating this angle bisector right here, it's not creating similar triangles, but the side lengths, two of the side lengths are proportional, but that third one is not. This one in the middle that I just wrote on is not proportional. But to help find these other ones, they are proportional. So what you're going to do and some teachers teach is a little bit different, but it will work. So I'm gonna first mark each part. So I have an X on this side, and then this would be 13 minus X, because the total is 13. Sometimes you would have to combine those lengths. Sometimes you're gonna have to subtract those lengths. But I create big over small equals big over small. Not all teachers do it this way, but I have 
an assigned side, big, small, and I just take the big side over the small side, set it equal to the big broken half, see this broken part that's divided by that D, over the small broken part, 13 over X over X. Cross multiply, solve for X, and then you can get what you need for X, but this problem is specifically is asking for AD, so you'd have to plug that X back in. At the very end, this I have these proofs. These proofs are not part of the book. I just found them and I thought they were good to review. You did learn how to do proofs in topic seven, so I thought you should practice. So first of all, know how to start every single proof. You should know how to start every single proof. Start it that way. You should also know how to end the statement of every single proof. Now, all you have to do is fill in these missing ones that you don't have. And remember, if you're trying to prove that two triangles are similar, there's only three rules you can use. Side, 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 angle, side, and angle, angle, similarity. So if you're trying to prove triangles are similar, you only have th these three choices, which means they would have to go right here. I thought you should write a proof on your own as well, just to give you practice before the test. So take the given information, get that proof started, figure out what you're trying to prove, that way you know how to get to the end of a proof and then fill in the gap, gaps. What else do we need to write this proof? So remember to set up your proof as statements and reasons and fill it in from there. I hope this helped. Good luck on your topic seven test.